Big news out of western Kentucky, literally with the announcement of a miles-long discovery at Mammoth Cave. National Park officials say explorers have added six more miles to the cave's length. In the silent expanse of western Kentucky, hidden beneath the green hills and the weathered terrain, the earth had kept a secret, vast, ancient, and entirely unimaginable. What began as a routine extension of Mammoth Cave's known passages soon escalated into a revelation that sent shockwaves across scientific communities worldwide. A newly uncovered six-mile stretch was added to what was already the longest cave system on the planet. But that was only the surface of the story. The turning point emerged when a coalition of geobiologists and cave specialists descended into one of the uncharted offshoots deep below the surface. Originally, their interest had been piqued by subtle anomalies, temperature fluctuations and magnetic disruptions revealed by satellite scans equipped with ground penetrating and thermal imaging sensors. What they anticipated was a geological curiosity, perhaps an unusual formation of stalactites or an underground river. What they encountered defied all precedent. As they ventured deeper, they stumbled into a sealed cavern, untouched by light or air from the surface for what could have been millions of years. But instead of finding suffocating darkness and lifeless stone, they entered a thriving biome, a self-contained ecosystem that had evolved entirely on its own terms. The moment they crossed the threshold, they realized the air was breathable, filled with oxygen levels that matched surface standards. The presence of a functioning, balanced atmosphere without sunlight was bewildering. The only visible source of illumination came from organisms themselves. Fungi and algae clung to stone walls and ceilings, exuding a gentle, bluish luminescence that shimmered like starlight, giving the entire cavern an ethereal ambiance. These life forms, glowing softly in the dark, bore no direct relation to any cataloged terrestrial species. Their cellular composition hovered between plant and animal, forming hybrid structures that blurred established biological classifications. More remarkable still were the mobile inhabitants. At first glance, they appeared insect-like, but closer observation revealed something wholly different. Their bodies were translucent, their exoskeletons laced with iridescent filaments that pulsed softly in sync with one another, suggesting a form of communication or coordination. They moved not randomly, but with an eerie purpose, displaying behaviors akin to hive insects, yet with a complexity that hinted at advanced social dynamics. Some species constructed nests using a viscous, resin-like material, forming interconnected domes. Others communicated through subtle vibrations, inaudible to human ears, but measurable with precision instruments. Light itself became a language. These creatures emitted pulses from their bodies in patterns too complex to be accidental. Samples taken under high security conditions later confirmed what the visual evidence suggested. Their genetic material bore little resemblance to anything previously seen. Over 90% of their DNA was alien to known Earth life, with only about 7% overlapping faintly with existing taxonomic groups. More astonishing than their uniqueness was their biochemical architecture. Several species used silicon-based metabolic pathways, a concept long hypothesized by theoretical biochemists, but never observed in nature. This discovery alone would have revolutionized biology. But it was only one layer of the enigma. The entire ecosystem appeared to have evolved in parallel with surface life, splitting off not merely millions, but potentially over a billion years ago, perhaps even before the Cambrian explosion. These organisms weren't relics of Earth's past. They were evidence of an alternate trajectory, a separate branch of life that had not only survived in isolation, but thrived, evolving not just uniquely, but with a kind of internal logic and consistency that no one could explain. It wasn't a glimpse into ancient history. It was the discovery of a hidden present. Geologists investigating the physical structure of the cavern found their own models upended. The cave extended for miles and was framed by stone layers far older than any surrounding geologic strata. Within its walls, they found mineral formations unlike any previously cataloged, 
some exhibiting geometric patterns that defied natural crystallization processes. A few even emitted stable electromagnetic pulses, while others registered mild radioactivity that appeared to be contained within precise, repeating intervals. When physicists entered the fray, instruments designed to detect gravitational anomalies began picking up subtle waveforms, patterns similar to low-frequency gravitational oscillations. These weren't strong enough to influence instruments above ground, but they pointed to a startling idea. The cavern system itself might be oscillating, perhaps even acting as a resonant chamber. Some began to speculate whether this vast chamber was a natural coincidence or an engineered structure. While most scientists maintained a cautious skepticism, the evidence became harder to ignore. The cavern's symmetry, the strange energy emissions, the architectural precision, everything suggested intentionality. Deep within one of the bioluminescent vaults, a discovery confirmed their suspicions. A monolithic object, composed of a material denser than any naturally occurring substance on Earth, stood embedded in the stone. Its surface bore spiral-like engravings that glowed when exposed to specific sound frequencies. Further analysis revealed that the object was aligned with a constellation no longer visible due to Earth's shifting axial tilt, a clue pointing to its immense age and calculated placement. Attempts to decode the glyphs proved fruitless at first. No known linguistic framework applied. Yet, the structure pulsed gently when exposed to certain mathematical sequences, such as Fibonacci tones. Linguists speculated that it wasn't a message written in language, but perhaps an invitation. Something meant to be interacted with, not read. Biologists examining the local fauna soon noticed repeating genetic patterns in several species. Complex, redundant sequences with no evolutionary advantage. These weren't mutations or errors. They resembled checksum algorithms found in digital systems, used to detect and correct errors in code. It was a disturbing revelation. Natural selection would normally purge such inefficiencies. Their persistence pointed to deliberate design. What if these creatures weren't just survivors of a parallel evolutionary experiment, but the products of guidance, biological software embedded with instructions? If true, the cavern was more than an ecosystem. It was a repository, a vault, a kind of molecular message. Adding weight to this hypothesis was the discovery of a network of fibrous structures embedded within the walls. These filaments responded to electric signals and glowed faintly when stimulated. They mirrored neural networks, not in a single organism, but across the biome itself. The walls behaved like semiconductive matrices, capable of carrying and perhaps even processing data. When tested with simple input-output sequences, the structures responded with non-random patterns. The implication was staggering. The cave system itself could be a form of distributed intelligence. As word spread among the scientific community, a schism formed. Some argued the formation was natural, however rare and unprecedented. Others leaned toward the possibility of intentional creation, potentially by a non-terrestrial intelligence. Regardless of origin, the implications were undeniable. Life had not only emerged twice on the same planet, but had done so in complete separation, developing mechanisms and principles foreign to known biology. And if it could happen once beneath Kentucky, it could happen anywhere, beneath Antarctic ice, in the Martian subsurface, or below Europa's frozen shell. This wasn't just a biological oddity, it changed the calculus of astrobiology entirely. Planets previously dismissed as lifeless could now be viewed as potentially teeming with ecosystems hidden beneath their crusts. Within days, the region surrounding the find was sealed. Government agencies, academic institutions, and private research bodies moved in. Entire subterranean research facilities were constructed under strict containment protocols, not because of fear of infection, but to avoid contamination of both the biome and the surface world. The stakes were too high. Surface microbes could disrupt the balance that had been maintained for eons. And if organisms from the cavern escaped, 
their impact on global ecosystems could be catastrophic. The chemical compositions discovered in the biome also drew the attention of engineers and technologists. Some of the crystalline compounds demonstrated properties perfect for radiation shielding, data storage, and superconductivity. These weren't merely scientific curiosities. They were potentially transformative technologies. Could this discovery become the foundation of a new generation of tools, of spacecraft? Could the secrets of interstellar survival be buried right beneath human feet? The questions multiplied faster than answers. Was the ecosystem waiting to be discovered? Was its emergence now, at this precise stage of human technological development, part of a design? Could these caves be nodes in a global network, silent for millennia until the right intelligence arrived? One thing was certain. The discovery didn't just belong to biology, or geology, or physics. It belonged to all of science, and perhaps to something beyond science altogether. As researchers ventured deeper into the Kentucky biome, the environment shifted in ways that defied natural classification. The deeper recesses of the cavern no longer felt static or inert. Walls and floors developed a strange pliability, as if composed not just of mineral, but of a flexible, responsive material. These surfaces subtly adjusted their tension and shape in reaction to movement, light, and even sound. Upon close analysis, the strange material was identified as a hybrid compound, a molecular fusion of silica and protein, forming a composite with tensile strength rivaling steel and regenerative qualities akin to living tissue. No known geological or biological process could account for its creation. Even more unsettling were the structures dubbed shadow wells, dark, mirror-like recesses that absorbed all light and emitted powerful magnetic fields. Standard equipment failed near them. Compasses spun uselessly, radiation meters fluctuated, and the few instruments that functioned captured data suggesting the absorption of subatomic particles, including neutrinos and low-energy gamma rays. Physicists speculated these wells might act as repositories of environmental data, storing centuries or millennia of energetic impressions like memory cores embedded within the landscape. Chronological anomalies emerged soon after. In one section of the cavern, multiple atomic clocks began to show discrepancies when compared to surface control systems. Time itself appeared to slow slightly, though imperceptibly to the human eye. Initial theories pointed to malfunction, but repeated measurements across several weeks confirmed localized temporal dilation. Some postulated exotic matter trapped within the mineral structure as a cause. Others suggested a deliberate manipulation of space-time embedded into the biome's architecture. It wasn't only the equipment that changed. Team members reported altered mental states, intense deja vu, recursive dreams, and a heightened emotional resonance they couldn't explain. Neurologists monitoring brain activity observed elevated theta wave patterns similar to those found in deep meditation or psychedelic states. Speculation grew that the cave did more than interact with biological life, it interacted with consciousness itself. Further exploration revealed a crystalline chamber coated in dust so fine it floated like smoke. As researchers entered, the dust rearranged into fractal geometries that mirrored the brainwave patterns of those inside. The pattern shifted with each individual, reacting as if the environment itself was perceiving them, engaging with their awareness rather than their presence. This room, quickly nicknamed the Mirror Vault, became a focal point of debate. Was this intelligent behavior, recognition, or simply a complex environmental feedback loop? A growing number of researchers theorized the entire biome operated not merely as an ecosystem, but as a cognitive entity, an emergent intelligence composed not of a single brain, but of relationships, feedbacks, and data encoded in stone, light, biology, and time. The idea that Earth itself could host such a layered mind, hidden below the crust for epics, challenged every assumption modern science had made about intelligence, evolution, and design. And if this intelligence had waited silently for its own discovery, the question shifted from, what is it, to, what does it want? As the expeditions into the depths continued, the biome's behavior became more reactive, less like an environment and more like an organism testing its visitors. Subtle changes in temperature gradients, electromagnetic fluctuations, and the emergence of new passageways that hadn't previously existed hinted at an underlying intelligence reshaping itself in response to observation. One team reported discovering an immense hollow chamber, where bioluminescent moss spiraled upward along crystalline pillars. These structures pulsed rhythmically, mimicking human cardiac patterns when anyone approached. 
It wasn't just echoing life, it was synchronizing with it. Months passed, and with each new revelation the mystery only deepened. Language theorists were brought in when researchers discovered sequences of geometric shapes carved into the basalt walls. These markings were not random. Their mathematical consistency suggested a symbolic logic, perhaps a communication protocol or a form of knowledge compression. Attempts to decode it yielded fragments of meaning, references to time, entropy, and energy conservation, concepts universal across intelligent frameworks. And yet there was an unmistakable aesthetic to it all, as if the cave itself understood not just structure, but beauty. Then came the dreams. Multiple researchers, separated by time and distance, began describing identical visions, towering spires, rotating tetrahedrons, and cities suspended in darkness. The recurring motif was a great silence, always just before waking. Sleep researchers found elevated DMT levels in participants exposed to the innermost chambers, despite none of them having any drug exposure. As when I was served, the caused often once their weeks. If this journey into the unknown fascinated you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the strangest, most profound discoveries hidden in the world beneath. There's more waiting just beneath the surface.